What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video today and in today's video I'm going to be showing you the importance of having a brand search campaign for your Google Ads account. This is something that is extremely low budget, it's not going to add much spend to your ad spend each day. I only spend around 5 to $10 a day on this campaign but you will see massive results from it and it will really benefit your Google Ad account as a whole. Now just before we do jump in, please make sure to drop a like and comment down below if you need any help. And if you do have any more detailed questions and you'd rather talk to me directly, just drop me a message on Twitter and Instagram. I'll leave links to those down below in the description. Okay, now jumping into the video today and you can see here just on the first slide, some results I've had from brand search campaigns. Now I will be going into my Google ad account in this video and showing you how you can make one of these campaigns. I'll do a complete setup guide in this video as well as giving you some reasons as to why you should be definitely doing this. But this right here is the lifetime results from my UK website brand search campaign of about two years, two to three years, you can see I spent £4,670 on this campaign and it generated me £150,000, which is a ROAS of 32.23, which is obviously, it's just ridiculous, let's be honest. Um, but anyway, if we just move on here, I'm gonna show you how you guys can make this campaign. And whilst we're making it, I'll obviously explain what it actually is. Okay, now when you're jumping into the new campaign screen on your Google Ads account, all you want to do is hit sales because obviously that is what we are aiming for here hit continue and then you want to select here search you don't want to be selecting shopping or any of the other ones and in the website visits here you obviously want to click this because we're not after phone calls or anything you would then enter your website URL here I'm obviously gonna blur my website out but then you would just re uh, name this here to brand search probably just leave it as brand search to be fair Click continue and you will be taken to this screen here. Now just before you proceed, essentially what a brand search campaign is, is a search campaign where you are giving Google your branded keywords. An example I'm gonna use in this video is the brand Wayfair. You'd essentially put a load of keywords in to this campaign, Wayfair related, and I will show you examples of keywords you can put in. And essentially you'll then be appearing as a search ad at the top of Google whenever someone searches your brand's name. And you might be wondering why would someone be searching my brand's name if, if they've not heard of me and stuff. It's more so to retarget and recapture previous visitors. You might get a click from a Performance Max campaign or a shopping campaign. Someone then might go and search your brand name later that day to go back to your website. And you wanna be appearing at the top of the Google search. Otherwise, if you're not bidding and buying those ad spaces with this brand search campaign odds are your competitors will be and you don't want your competition to steal your traffic so that is why this is so important it's so good at capturing warm traffic and that is why you see such high return on ad spend for a campaign like this anyway on to the bidding because it is such warm traffic I personally don't stress too much about this in most of my campaigns I always select maximize conversion value or in this case it's just conversion value I prefer this option over conversions, but if you want to split test, you're more than welcome to. But to begin with, I always go for this. And because you are going to achieve such a good ROAS with this campaign due to the nature of the traffic that's going to be coming through it, you don't really need a target return on ad spend. As much as your Google account rep might tell you to, you really don't need to. Okay, moving on to the next screen, you've got some campaign settings here. I always include search network as it is a search campaign. I usually tick this box here. But I always untick the display network for a search campaign. I find the quality of the traffic in a display campaign to be quite poor and it's not really necessary. You want to be capturing people that are actually searching for your brand name rather than popping up on websites that you know where, where people aren't searching your name. It's, it's all about capturing that warm traffic. For locations, it's entirely up to you here. If you are very focused on just one country, you would select the country here or whatever other country that is. My brand is a UK brand, so for me, I would be selecting United Kingdom. However, if you're obviously running ads in other countries or if you notice you get customers from other countries, it's probably worth selecting all countries and territories. And But make sure, pl please make sure, if you are selecting just one country, make sure you are selecting people in or regularly in your targeted location. Otherwise, Google will go out and target other people that aren't in this country, which again can lead to poor quality of traffic. And for the exclude one, you can just leave that top box clicked. Make sure you select the correct language. In this case, it is English. And for these two options here, because of the type of campaign it is a brand search campaign, you don't need to do anything here. The only other thing you might wanna do in the more settings thing is just select a start date of midnight the following day 
but it's not really necessary as you are going to be setting such a small budget for this campaign. Okay, moving on to the next step, this is where you are going to enter the keywords for this campaign and these are the branded keywords. I'm going to hop back to the slideshow in a minute just to show you how to structure this. As we are using Wayfair as an example in this video, these are some keywords I would put into this campaign. I would definitely avoid using broad match search terms because otherwise you are going to get a lot of irrelevant clicks and you want to be very focused and only get clicks and show up for results that include your brand name. So some terms you want to include is just the brand name itself in an exact and phrase match. This is what these are if you're wondering. If you're not sure what these quotation marks are or the closed and open brackets things here, these are essentially exact and phrase match. So when you are entering your keywords into the section here, if you just did Wayfair, this would be a broad match and this is where Google would probably go out and find people that aren't necessarily searching for your brand name. And because we are making a brand search campaign here, you want to be very specific with the search terms you're appearing for and you're obviously only going to be wanting to appear for that brand name so this here right here if you add two quotation marks this is what you call a phrase match or if you add these uh, squared brackets if you will that is what an exact match looks like and it's quite self-explanatory as to what they are but these are examples here that you can add in as your keywords wayfair delivery you can add reviews at the end you can add discount and some other additional terms you might want to throw in are legit tracking stock and delivery. I personally use all of these options here on my brand search campaign, but for the purpose of this video, we're just gonna chuck these ones in. We hop back over and there we go. That's all you need to do. You don't need a ton. It is a very, very simply structured campaign. Now you're probably wondering what exactly you should be putting in the actual ad itself. Now, personally, my brand campaign is very generic and yours can be too. You can use this opportunity to test special offers, for example. You might want to hide a 10% discount code in the description of your search campaign. It's a good opportunity to tell people you have free delivery or if you've got a sale on. But if we just take a look here, I've just searched Wayfair on Google and this is an example of a brand search campaign. You can see the heading here, you've got Wayfair, everything home same day shipping very eye-catching very straight to the point and when someone sees the same day shipping thing here it is going to entice them to have a look and potentially place an order and you can just get an example here of the description uh, shop the look then bring it home they've highlighted that it's a quick and easy checkout so they're emphasizing that the buying process is easy and stress-free they've got big deals on as well so they're essentially covering all bases here so it's definitely worth mentioning if you've got a sale on mention your shipping policy if you have free returns you can add that into here if you've got 24 7 customer support that's another very good thing to have in here because people like that they like to hear that there's 24 7 or at least seven days a week customer support. If they're first time buyers, it's definitely some reassurance for them. Now moving on, once you've filled out your ad, you have the opportunity to add extensions to your ad and extensions are these bits here. You can see these extra little uh, links here, even here, this isn't an ad, but these are all extensions. This is a good opportunity and the way I use this, I add um, some collections. So we'll use Wayfair as an example again. I typically add four site link extensions to a brand search campaign. So for Wayfair, I would probably do things like home garden kitchen bedroom for example so you would add them here all you would do is click new site link extension you'd put the word bedroom you can add descriptions if you want I actually usually don't for brand search campaigns and then you would just put the URL into this bit here and then you'd repeat the process have garden kitchen etc like that personally in my brand search campaign I don't actually use call out extensions or call extensions we rarely need call extensions because we're an e-commerce site if you're a lead gen business and you're attempting to get clients over the phone for example this would be a good option to have but I do tend to use the image extensions here again I usually throw four to six images into a brand search campaign you might be wondering what images to use I personally use my top four to six products because you know they sell and you know they're going to be eye-catching for for the people looking at them so that is another good thing you can add there then once you've done that click next enter your budget for this particular campaign on my UK site my budget is nine pound a day on my American site I think it's a little bit less I think it might just be eight pound on my American site but once you've hit your budget you'd click next and then you'd review all your campaign settings and then you would just simply scroll to the bottom and click publish now obviously I'm not going to publish this campaign because I already have a brand search campaign okay so you've set your campaign up now let's quickly run through why exactly they are important I'm just going to move myself to the bottom here so we can see all of this 
Essentially, as I mentioned earlier, you are going to want to dominate your brand name on Google. Otherwise, your competitors will, especially if you start growing and scaling. If you're not bidding on your own keywords for your brand name, your competition will and they'll be taking your warm traffic, which is likely to convert on your site if they end up on your site. They're taking that away from you and giving it to their own website. It's, it's a good way to stay ahead of your competition and essentially make sure your competitors aren't stealing your traffic. Next up, it generates extremely cheap results. Now, as I showed in the screenshot at the start, you can see this is my brand search campaign on my Google account. You can see the name up here. I said earlier it was at just nine pound a day and you can see that I've had extremely, extremely cheap cost per purchase. If we just actually find out exactly how much it is costing us, cost conversion, I'm paying one pound 46 per conversion, i.e. per purchase on this campaign. The lifetime from August, 2020 to pretty much two years now, is a 32 ROAS. And not only is it gonna get you cheap conversions, those cheap conversions are very, very good for your Google ad account as a whole. The more conversions you're giving your Google account, the better chance your other campaigns, like your shopping campaigns, your Pmax campaigns, the better chance they have at optimizing quicker because of those extra conversions you're getting from this campaign. It helps Google know what types of customers purchase from your business. As I mentioned earlier, it captures warm traffic, which is why you'll find you'll have such a high ROAS and cheap cost per purchase. And finally, it's not a campaign that's gonna see a massive increase in your daily ad spend. You won't even notice it. Like I said, I only spend nine pounds a day on this you could probably set yours to half of that if you're doing up to 1500 pounds or dollars a day in revenue you can literally set it at four or five pounds or dollars a day and you'll still see very good results with it and just to summarize these are the performances of my brand search campaigns for the entirety of their lifetime so the uk site i mean i just showed you that we've got a 32 roas and on the us site it's a bit less at a 26 roas but they've spent similar amounts had a similar number of conversions and overall they are very very beneficial to my businesses and they certainly will be for you as well i hope you found this video useful and if you haven't already i hope you do go ahead and make one of these campaigns let me know the results you get with your brand search campaigns and like i said at the start if you've got any questions just drop me a message on twitter and instagram below other than that thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in my next video